Hey, it's me, Nalathazar, and welcome to another Magic the Gathering Puzzle Quest video. In today's video, I'm going to be going over my tricolor and colorless Planeswalker tier list. So, let's get into it. Now, as there aren't any new tricolor or colorless planeswalkers that have come out this year. Uh, there's really not anything new to add to this list. It's just about which ones are going to move around. So this is gonna be a pretty short video. With that said, what I'm gonna try and accomplish here is to go over which are the ones that I think you absolutely need to have so that you can know which ones to target with planeswalker sales uh, and then which ones are more planeswalkers that are just good, but they're not necessarily necessary. So the first of them I'm going to go ahead and move is Karn. I think that Karn has a very good case along with Kazmina for being the best planeswalker in the game. You're able to achieve the highest mana bonuses in the game uh, with Karn because of Karn's first ability. And then on top of that, being able to use any color in Karn, because we keep getting all these events that allow us to use all five Planeswalker colors, just means that Karn is able to provide you with an amount of flexibility that is not provided by really any other Planeswalker in the game. The first ability only costing four loyalty means that you can spam it at will, and as a result of how the ability works by boosting your mana bonuses and giving you cards in your hand, you're able to just accelerate really, really quickly. The third ability only costing 12 loyalty means that the sum of Karn's loyalty abilities is less than New Soren's third ability by itself. So Karn's abilities are really cheap, really easy to use, and is absolutely worth the combined effort of mana crystals and mana runes to purchase and level him up. The next Planeswalker on the list for me is going to be Bolas. So... Uh, it's going to be Bolas 1 here for most players, although for me there's a different Bolas that I personally prefer to use. It's just that Bolas the God Pharaoh having the kill a creature for the first ability as only 9 loyalty makes this Planeswalker really easy to use and just really, really strong. Red, blue, and black make for an excellent combination for removal, and so you're able to build some really strong decks using Bolas God Pharaoh. The third ability, Call of the Scarab, is going to let you bring things back from the graveyard, serves as a pseudo win con, and the second ability is going to draw you cards, which is really useful. For me, I'm putting Bolas here in the S plus tier after Karn, just because I see Bolas God Pharaoh more often than I use see my own favorite Bolas. So I'm actually going to go ahead and put this as a 1A, 1B. Uh, this is going to surprise many of you because I'm sure that you think I'm going to put Bolas the Ravager there. But after the last time I made this list, a lot of you clambered for me to actually try Bolas the Dragon God, and this one has become my personal favorite Bolas. So the first ability is going to be 9 loyalty, it draws you cards, and it exiles a card from your opponent's hand. But really, it's just going to enable you to get more stuff in your hand more quickly to complete objectives. The second ability is going to be able to get rid of supports or your opponent's strongest creature, and it bypasses Hexproof. So I find that the extra flexibility of getting rid of Vanguards along with being able to bypass Hexproof makes the second ability, Dragon God Scorn, more useful to me than Bolas 1's first ability. And then finally, the Ascension to Godhood deals 30 damage to your opponent and then an additional 5 for each legendary card you control. It does destroy those legendary cards, but I can't tell you how many events. I just wind up waiting until I've met my objectives, I pop my third ability, and then the game is over. So you've got a really good way of achieving objectives with the first ability, staying in the battle with the second ability, and ending the game with the third ability. Beyond that, Bolas Dragon God has, in my opinion, the best mana bonuses of the Bolases, with the plus four to red and plus four to black. We just have so much that is converting gems right now to our colors in standard that having the higher mana bonuses definitely counts for more, for me at least, for Bolas the Dragon God. So Bolas Dragon God is absolutely an S-plus tier Planeswalker. 
For me personally, I would honestly suggest that you pick it up over Bolas 1, but I think a lot of other people would argue that you should pick up Bolas 1 over Bolas 3. So just, you know, how the cookie crumbles. You definitely cannot ignore the power of this one in Legacy, and that's going to be Brokon. Brokon is an incredibly powerful Planeswalker. Uh, Brokon is phenomenal, and really is always going to be phenomenal. The third ability, fetching the next three creatures with power six or greater, and giving them all full mana and haste, is just absolutely nasty. The second ability that creates the Dragon Token really isn't that good. For that matter, I would definitely not use it for 15 loyalty. And the first ability is only situationally useful because it only draws one card and the mana bonus increase is temporary. So even though it says six turns, it'll be your turn, your opponents, your turn, your opponents, your turn. So you get three turns of that increased mana bonus. And that increased mana bonus is going to be random based on the bonuses of that card's colors. That said, there's just so many big baddies in green and even in red that you're always going to be able to do something particularly nasty with the Sangrite Overlord's ability. And Brokon's color combination makes him quite possibly the best Planeswalker for just raw damage and legacy. So Brokon is phenomenal. I don't use Brokon very much myself. I don't like the plus three as the highest mana bonus, just because, as I've said already, we have so much gem conversion in the game right now that I really just don't think that Brokon stands up to the other walkers that I personally like to use. Um, but with that said, that's not to say that Brokon is bad. Brokon is great. He just doesn't fit my playstyle, so I don't use him very much. The next S plus tier planeswalker is going to be Tamiyo Field Researcher. Tamiyo really earns her place here in the S plus tier because of her incredible viability in Legacy and her periodic like superpowers in Standard. If you're ever able to get to a point where you're able to use her third ability on repeat, then Tamiyo is going to become one of the most powerful planeswalkers in the game. Having the mana bonuses for blue, green, and white increased by 12 for four turns means it's increased by 12 for two of your turns. And if you're able to use that ability every single turn, then you're able to get a maximum of plus 24 to those mana bonuses at all times and always cap out your hand, which is absolutely ridiculous and for that matter we got a new card i want to say it's called faith bond judge but that thing fills up your loyalty like nobody's business for that matter white just seems to be getting a whole bunch of things that want to give it a whole bunch of loyalty every single standard rotation so tamio is just really really good uh, i don't use her as much because of her base mana bonuses again they're just not quite my cup of tea uh, but that doesn't mean that she's bad uh, she is excellent uh, she just I, I don't use her as much because she doesn't fit how I play in the current standard. In Legacy, she's an absolute boss. Uh, I actually think that Tamiyo and Brokon are better than the Bolosses in Legacy, but uh, as I'm basing this mostly on standard, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put them here. This doesn't mean that this is definitely the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 ranking. Uh, it's just how I rank them myself, so... Next up on the list, we've got our next Bolas. So this is going to be Bolas number two, Bolas the Ravager. And while I think that Bolas the Ravager has the best abilities of the Bolases, the flip side, Bolas the Arisen, has, in my opinion, the best abilities in the game. Major Bolas's Omnipotence is just an absolute game changer and game ender. Uh, and then the second ability being able to bring things back, the first ability providing you with control, makes Bolas the Arisen just an absolute beast. But in the current standard, because we really don't have, I mean, because we have so much in the way of gem conversion, I'm finding that all of the matches where I would have used Bolas the Ravager, I'm now using Bolas over here, Senor Guapo, Dragon God. I don't even know that Senor Guapo means anything. If it does and it means something bad, please tell me. I don't actually mean it to. I just think it sounds amusing. Anywho, Bolas... Uh, the Arisen, unfortunately, I think is currently in the current standard, right? Uh, just a little touch below the other two losses, so I'm going to have it go ahead and reside in the S tier for right now. Now, keep in mind, this is absolutely, by all other standards of Planeswalker, an S plus tier Planeswalker. Like, no matter what is in standard, this is going to be a good Planeswalker. It's just not as good as the other losses, And so this is sort of like with the dual color tier list where I knocked some Planeswalkers down a peg just because there were other Planeswalkers that fulfilled their role better. Yeah, that's why it's there. And next up, 
is going to be Narset of the Ancient Way. Narset has a wonderful gift and a terrible curse. The wonderful gift is that her three colors work together phenomenally. You're able to do absolutely wonderful, terrible things with Narset because of her colors. Her curse is that none of her three abilities are great abilities. Mind Attachment is the only one that's like good, but the other two abilities are not good. So because of that, Narset really is reliant on you having specific cards. She is not going to be good if you don't have good cards because you're not gonna get a whole lot out of her abilities. And so for that reason, I happen to think that Rawl is able to fulfill the role of spell-based Planeswalker as red-blue better than Narset is, and I think that Kalemni is able to fulfill the role of Hazard's Undying Fury deploy beatdown for red-white better than Narset is. So just for the different roles that you would use Narset, there are better Planeswalkers. Granted, getting Narset and then leveling her up will be cheaper than buying both of those two together and then leveling both of them up. Uh, but that said, I still think that it's better to have those two right now than it is to have Narset. So uh, Narset is phenomenal. And by all other standards, you could say that Narset should be an S plus tier Planeswalker because she is a three color Planeswalker and that's just how it is. But right now I'm just judging her based on her peers on this particular list. And so that's why I'm going to go ahead and have Narset stay in the S tier. Next up on the list are going to be the two that I don't have. And once again, if I don't have the Planeswalker, there's probably a pretty good reason for it. The first of them is Ugin. Now, Ugin has, once again, a great gift and a terrible curse. The great gift for Ugin is that leveling Ugin up is going to cost you the same amount as leveling up a monocolored Planeswalker. So it's really easy for a newer player to pick up Ugin and level Ugin up and then have a five color planeswalker for all intents and purposes for most events. The downside to Ugin is that Ugin doesn't have any abilities that are actually good. So I really wouldn't suggest picking up Ugin and sinking all of your crystals and runes into Ugin. Just, just, just get Karn. Save up for Karn. Power up Karn. You'll be way happier in the long run. There are cool things that you can do with Ugin, don't get me wrong. It's just Ugin absolutely pales in comparison to our other monocolor and tricolor planeswalkers and then finally we have ted the eldrazi desolation and the eldrazi desolation has three absolutely terrible abilities uh, and absolutely terrible mana gains and so ted doesn't have the gift that ugin has where ted costs less because for some reason ted is terrible Ted is going to cost you the full, I want to say it's 850 mana crystals to buy and the full 320,000 mana runes to level up. And so as a result, for me, Ted is absolutely an F tier planeswalker. Now, is Ted better than a lot of monocolor and dual color planeswalkers because you can make Ted five colors? Sure. But compared to the other planeswalkers on this list right here, is there any reason at all for you to get the Eldrazi Desolation? Honestly, zero. There is zero reason. No, there's one reason. You're a collector and you want to own everything and you want to play with stuff. But that, that's really the only reason. Ted is not good. Just get Karn. You'll be way happier for it. Heck, you can even just get Ugin because you want to level up a Planeswalker to 60 quicker and you'll be happier for it. At least Ugin's abilities are sort of cool. Karn, way better though. So... The simple version of this, if you're looking for a colorless planeswalker, get Karn. If you're looking for a Bolas, uh, pick between these two right here. Uh, my own personal preference is uh, this Bolas right here, right? Um, and that's just because I like the mana gains. So it's probably going to be one of those things. If you have more cards at your disposal, you'll probably like Dragon God more. Uh, and if you have fewer cards at your disposal, then you'll like Bolas God Pharaoh better, right? It's just going to be based on that. Uh, Brokon and Tamiyo should be in all collections, uh, as should a Bolas. That said, if you have any one of these three Bolases, you can't go wrong. So I would say all collections should have a Bolas, all collections should have Karn, all collections should have Brokon, all collections should have Tamiyo. As to whether or not you want the others to fill out, that's up to you, but I wouldn't say that they're necessary. So I hope this helps you with the upcoming Planeswalker sale. 
uh, let me know if you have any differences on your list than I do. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.